Okay. This Barbara is... Chapman, Cowgirls Get Going For God in Fresno, California, and we're outside. And this is Peanut. He wants to be a part of our lesson. This is video three on salvation. And we're going to see if we can get him moved. Okay. This is my sister, Carrie Flores. This is Peanut. My mom went inside because she was having a little bit of a coughing spell. So, video number three, we're on salvation. And it is, uh, let me see, salvation, how you receive it and can you lose it. So, we're going to jump right back in there. And I have to write on here which video this is. This is video number three. Okay. What does it mean to believe and receive? John 3, 16. How many of us have heard John 3, 16? And we hear it, we hear it, we hear it, and how so many of us take it for granted because it just goes in one ear and out the other and doesn't go in here. <coughs> Who can believe in Jesus? What are the results of believing? Romans 10, 9. That is an awesome one. That's usually the verse that I'll share with people as a prayer of salvation. What are we to confess with our mouths? What are we to believe with our heart? And what are the results? These are some notes. These notes and these questions right here are something I got from Beth Jones. She's my mentor. Uh, BethJones.org or Kalamazoo, uh, ba Kalamazoo Valley uh, Family Church in Kalamazoo, Michigan. She's awesome. If you're looking for a church and someone I may talk about moving and shaking and teaching and visual, she's just, her and her husband are the absolute bomb. So this is a quote from something that she had. It says, confess. This is what she gave as a definition for confessing, okay? We receive salvation by a combination of what we say with our mouth and what we believe in our heart. To confess means to acknowledge, to agree with, and to say the same thing as, totally agree. To confess our belief in Jesus as Lord means to acknowledge and to agree and say that Jesus is Lord. Praise God. Okay, I've got a note. Now, lots of times I'll put a note, and that's me sharing something from my heart, and maybe not a scripture. So I've got a note here. It says, if you stand out of the, it says, if you study, I'm sorry, if you study out of the NIV study Bible, you can look in the back of your Bible in your concordance, okay? And I've got page numbers, and again, if you follow along with me, I use, uh, the Believer's Bible Commentary a lot, and it's just, it's short and brief, and it's easy when we're looking at some things, but in your NIV Bible, or whatever Bible you have, most of them are going to have a concordance in the back. Okay, this is my, one of my notebooks. It's going to have a concordance in the back, and I think this one does, uh, and you can't see it. Yeah, but in the very back, okay, you're going to have a concordance if you've got any, any type of a Bible at all, and you can look up specific words. And if you really want to get into the study of salvation, which is what we're on now, you can look in the back and you can look up the word salvation and it's going to have all the scriptures throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation on the subject of salvation. And that is where you can really get into any type of study, word study, right? So I made a note that says that, and I have the NIV, it says if you have the NIV study Bible, you can look in the back of your Bible and your concordance page 2308 and see several scriptures on salvation. And you can look them up and, like I said, study more of those maybe in your quiet time. Okay, now we're going to look at Ephesians 2, 8, and 10. Do you want to read Ephesians 2, 8, and 10, Carrie? Okay. She's kind of got her hands full right now. I don't know if she's going to be able to do that. I'll read Ephesians 2, 8, and 10. And she'll try to maybe put a little peanut down because in a minute I'll ask her to read something else to be a part of this, okay? So in Ephesians 2, 8, and 10, this is where we're going to start with some verses for salvation. All right, it says, verses 8 and 10, God saved you by His grace. Grace, grace, God's grace. It's awesome. When you believe. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done, so no one can boast about it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Jesus Christ. So we can do good things as He's planned for us long ago. So we don't work for our salvation, but once you're saved and you're on fire for God, you're going to want to work. You're going to want to do things for Him because that's God's plan. So you can go out and reach out to others. And I've got another note here that I'm saying. It says that the WOW Women of Word and Calcos Could Go For God website is the, has the entire book of Ephesians study guide on that. I did that probably, I don't know, two or three years ago. Before I started this, God had me doing studies, and I studied out the whole book of Ephesians. And I've probably got 50 little books about this thick on the entire book of Ephesians, and I don't know if God will ever use them, or they're just going to sit there and gather dust in my laundry room. I don't know. God has a plan, but it was a study. And all six chapters of Ephesians, which is really good for, you know, being a, learning how to walk with God and about the church, and that's on the website, Ephesians chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. They're all out there. Print them out. 
Okay, Carrie, we're going to look at Ephesians 4, 11 through 13. So if you want to read Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, let's see what God says there about salvation. And I've got some notes in here to read from my commentary, but since I'm in Fresno, I don't have the commentary, but I will share with you what pages they are. And again, in your quiet time, you can get more into it, okay? So Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, Carrie, what does that say? And he gave some as apostles, and some as prophets, and some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers, for the equipping of the saints for the work of service to the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of stature, which belongs to the fullness of Christ. Okay. And then I've got on here that um, a lot of these scriptures I want more clarification or to share more with you and if you have a Believer's Bible Commentary and again you follow along with any of the Calvaries get going the Believer's Bible Commentary page 1934 is going to be the place to go to magnify all those scriptures okay now I'll read Romans 11 6 Romans 11 6 let's just see what God's Word says about salvation in that it says in 6 and since it is through God's kindness through God's kindness, then it is not by their good works. Again, it's not by good works. You can only get to heaven through Jesus Christ, accepting Him as your personal Savior. There's no other man, no other way. It's one way, Jesus Christ. For in that case, God's grace would be what it really is, free and undeserved. And I've got a question. I've got a hmm question. Now, sometimes I have answers and sometimes I don't. This is my question. How many times, this is something you're going to have to look up in quiet time, and I think Carrie agrees with it because I don't even have the answer. It says, how many times is the word free used in this lesson scripture prior to us getting into Hebrew? I heard the word free a lot, didn't you? Mm -hmm. I didn't count them, but that would be a good one to look up, don't you think, Carrie? If you look it up, email one of us and let us know how many times you heard the word free prior to this portion of the lesson. All right? Then we have Romans 4, 16 through 25. Romans 4, we're going to kind of chill out. we got a, 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 a helicopter going over, so we'll take a drink of our coffee. Romans 4, 16 through 25. Okay. You want to read this one, Carrie? I'll get the next one to read Romans 4. This is a long one, okay? You know what? Do you want to read it from here where I've got yeah. some of the words? I've got words emphasized, so where you see they're bold, you'll emphasize on that. So go ahead and read this through there. Okay, Romans 4, 16 through 25. So the promise is received by faith. It is given as a free gift, and we are all certain to receive it, whether or not we live according to the law of Moses. If we have faith like Abraham's, for Abraham is the father of all who believe. That is what the scriptures mean when God told him, I have made you the father of many nations. This happened because Abraham believed in God who brings the dead back to life and who creates new things out of nothing. Think on things that are pure and holy. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. And Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, he figured his body was as good as dead, and so was Sarah's womb. Wow. This is a note she has inserted. We must believe and have faith regardless of how we feel or what others may say about a certain situation. Share some examples if time permits. Do you have anything to insert there? No, not today. We're kind of short, so we'll keep going. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. And because of Abraham's faith, God counted him as righteous. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit, it was for, it was recorded. For our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous. If we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, he was handed over to die because 